Good morning. I really, really hate commercials. I don't like ads. This morning on the way here, I was trying to listen to Spotify. And Spotify ads, I don't know if you use Spotify, but Spotify ads are just the worst. Like, they're just like, ah, they irk me. Um, and there's this one that I, I kept hearing, and I've heard it in other places too, not just Spotify. But it goes like this. What do you see when you see you? It's an ad for a, a credit card. I think it's Capital One or something. <laughs> so a little bit of a reach there from what, what do you see when you see you to a credit card. But the idea is that the credit card allows you to chase your dreams, to be who you really are, because for you to be you, all you need is financial freedom. All you need is spending power. Ads really try to sell us a certain idea of what it means to be human. Have you noticed that ads rarely talk about the product itself? It's always about a lifestyle. It's always, they're always selling you an idea that you can use their product or service to make something out of yourself. This is the, the consumer self. I've heard this referred to as uh, I shop, therefore I am. The idea is that you can be whoever you want. There's a product for you. Just hand over your money. Think about yourself for a moment. Look at yourself. Who do you see? Who do you want to see? As if we don't spend enough time already thinking about ourselves. As if we don't spend enough time concerned about how other people see us. But the science of advertising is more or less the science of mind control. If they can change the way that you, that you see yourself, they can make you do just about anything. And it turns out, they can. It works. We get bombarded with ads promising to make us something, to make us who we really want to be. And it's kind of a bait and switch because they bait you with this idea of you need this to be what you want to be. And then you do what they say, you go out and buy it, and then there's the switch. Actually, it's one more thing you need. That was good, but you just need a little bit more. What do they see when they see you? Sorry to have to say it, but they see dollar signs. They see a cash cow. They see someone they can make money on. They see sheep who are looking for a shepherd, who are trying to get what they need. And they really want you to believe that they are the shepherd that you're looking for. You know, there are some parts of that whole idea that sound pretty good to us. There's this idea of you can be whoever you want that we like some part of that we actually like. We like the idea that everyone creates their own self. But it's actually not going that well for us, is it? Today, people have a responsibility to choose their identity. That was unthinkable even a few decades ago. People have this idea that they have to choose the trajectory of their lives. Which college will you go to? What sort of career will you pursue? What will your hobbies be? Where will you travel? Who will your friends be? Where will you live? Will you have kids? How many? When? All of these things are choices. And we're told that these choices are what makes us who we are. And while there might be a ring of optimism to it, I think more often than not, it, feels, it leaves people feeling disenchanted. A lot of people feel like they should have accomplished more, like they made the wrong choices. Like it's their fault that they are who they are. Because if you can be whoever you want, then whoever you are is entirely your fault. So what do you see when you see you? It may be no surprise that the creation story in Genesis chapter 2 gives a very different idea of humanity. The first thing we see here is that humanity begins as a lump of dirt. 
but a lump of dirt in the hands of God. God forms the human from the ground. He gives the man his shape. And then God breathes into the human, and the human breathes out, and in and out. And Adam comes alive. Then God sticks his hands into the dirt again, and this time he pulls up palm trees and grapevines and every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. God has planted a garden for Adam to live in. He can live here in the shade of the trees and eat, from the, and eat all of their fruit. God gives the human a place to live and a way to keep living. So we see that while the human has life within him, life always comes only from God. In the center of the garden, God plants the tree of life. And all around the tree, life springs up. We see a river flowing out from the Garden of Eden, and it splits into four rivers. And these rivers bring life to the whole earth. From the garden, life spreads across the face of the earth. We see that in every way, humanity, humanity depends on God for life and being. The human is placed in the garden to till it and keep it. Adam's life has meaning and shape because of God's command. Till the ground. Spread life from the tree to the whole earth. And this is a positive command. This is God saying, Adam, this is who you are. Be who you are. This is how to be what I have created you to be. But also in the center of the garden, we see the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And to this tree there, it, and this tree comes with a command. Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Suddenly in the garden of life, we see death. Where did that come from? What's that doing here? Right next to the tree of life, we find the tree of death, and everything evil is bound up in that tree. So don't eat from that tree. The only don't in the garden of life is the one that leads to death. The command of God is for the human to live and keep living, so don't die. Here in the center of the garden, we see the source and limit of the human being. God gives life through the tree of life. Adam will live as long as he is connected to his source. This is who you are, Adam. This is where your life comes from. And so the tree of knowledge is a limit. It's God saying, this is who you are not. The knowledge of good and evil represents the possibility of finding life apart from God. It's the limit because it is something that the human cannot do. He can't be his own source of life. It's the tree of death because death is what happens when a being who is not God tries to find life apart from God. Life only comes from God. God is the only source of life. So at every point in this story, we see that life is something humanity receives from God. So don't unplug from the source. Don't think that we can figure this out on our own because we can't. We are not God. There is no life in us that is not from God. We can't create life for ourselves. The moment that we think we can is the moment that we begin to die. It's the moment that the breath that God has given us begins to slowly slip away. And so this idea of humanity sounds a lot like something else we see throughout Scripture. Sheep. We see a lot of sheep in Scripture, don't we? Humanity is described as sheep who need a shepherd. Sheep really have a hard time figuring out how to live. Uh, they're really good at finding ways to die. Sheep without a shepherd end up harassed and helpless looking for what they need in all the wrong places. Sheep need a shepherd to lead them to what is good, to give them what they need. We are like sheep who need a shepherd. We depend on God to give us life. So when we see God establishing a limit for humanity at the center of the garden, that limit is a gift to Adam. It's God saying to Adam, this is who you are, so be that. The negative command of don't eat from that tree is a boundary which gives Adam definition. It tells him how to be what he is. 
don't try to be God. God has that covered. God's command defines Adam's being, and Adam receives everything that he needs from God. So what kind of ads would work on Adam? Adam, what do you see when you see you? What do you want to be? Think about who you could be, Adam, if you wore Ralph Lauren. Think about who you could be if you had the financial freedom of a Capital One card. Think about who you could be if you booked with Expedia and traveled the world. Everyone would think you were all that, Adam. Everyone would want to be you, Adam. Everyone would love you, Adam. No, that's nonsense. Adam receives everything he needs from the hand of God. He's like a sheep with his shepherd standing right next to him, giving him what he needs. Adam's only answer to the question of who do you want to be, who do you see when you see you, is I see that I'm the image of God. I am what God has created me to be. The only thing he can imagine being is himself, living in God's garden of life. All he knows is tilling the ground and spreading that life and being who God has created him to be. The limit is a gift. Adam knows exactly who he is. And he has no illusion that things could be any better. But it's hard for us to accept our limits. It's really hard to allow something outside of ourselves to tell us who or what we are. We see how far downstream from the garden we've come. We think we can figure out life for ourselves. And in fact, we're told every day that this is a privilege, that this is good, that this is the only way. You don't have to age. You don't have to work. You don't have to be bored or uncomfortable ever. Who do you want to be? You can be that. Stare into your soul and decide what you are, as if, the only thing, as if you are the only thing in existence, and so you have to make meaning for yourself, as if life and being comes from nowhere but you. Is it any wonder that we have produced a culture of isolation? Is it any wonder that people today are so lonely? Because that's where this leads, isn't it? That's ultimately what we want when we say we don't want limits, right? We just want to be left alone. Just leave me alone. But God says, it is not good that the human should be alone. And then we notice that at this point, Adam is alone. There is no other. It's just him. He has everything he needs, but he's alone. All the other animals that God has made from the dirt, they don't cut it. They are no companion for the human. So God takes a different approach. Instead of reaching into the earth again, God reaches into the human. He takes a part of Adam. And he forms it into another human. What is this other creature? Adam sees her and he's overjoyed. At last, he exclaims, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This other person is like him because she is from him, but she isn't him. And he isn't her. This is another person. Adam isn't alone. And again, we see limit and being. For Adam, the other person is both his being and his limit. He is her, but he is also not her. She knows him. She is from him. She knows that he is a limited creature who depends on God for life. And yet she loves him. And he loves her. She knows him, oops, this, so this other person who is not Adam also is Adam. This, their relationship is described as one flesh. Two people become one person. There's a part of who Adam is that comes from Eve. He only is himself in relationship to her. And so we understand that, as the text tells us, we understand that marriage is the deepest form of this. But it's true in every relationship. When you know someone and you love them and they love you, that person becomes a part of who you are. This is the beginning of one of the strangest things God creates, which is human relationships. And we see that God creates relationships as another limit which defines the human being. 
Who am I? I am not you. But you all are becoming a part of me. You're making me who I am. Who we are comes from outside of us. It comes from relationships. We all make each other who we are. So what could you sell to Adam and Eve? Adam, you need the latest stuff from the bay to look good for Eve. No, she already loves him just the way he is. She loves him as she loves herself. They're both naked and they feel no shame. No need to cover up. They love each other as they are. Eve, you need to post your resume online to get a better job so you can be fulfilled in your work. No, her work in the garden is good. It's just what she was created for. Adam, and Adam loves that she was created for it. Adam and Eve, you need a mortgage with Quest Trade. Those commercials, man, <laughs> they get me. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> you need a mortgage with Quest Trade so you can have your dream home and live the life you've always wanted. No. They already have the life they've always wanted. They receive everything they need from God. They have life in the garden with their creator. You can't advertise to people like this. You can't sell an identity to people who receive their being from God. They are who they are because that's who God created them to be. There's no grasping for self-definition. They just are together and they love it and it's good. So I think we can see how far from the garden we are. This idea of receiving our being from outside of ourselves hardly even makes sense to us. We think of other people as competition instead of loving limits for ourselves. We struggle against other people to define who we are. We take advantage of their limits and we hope that they don't find out ours. We protect our own at the expense of others because there's only so much to go around. We can't all have the good life, can we? We really are like sheep without a shepherd. We will believe anything that they tell us. We will try just about anything that they sell us. If they promise it will, give, it will bring us life. And it doesn't work, does it? There's hardly time to get your new product out of its packaging before you realize that you need more. They haven't given us life. They've sold us a lie and sent us on our way, knowing it's only a moment before we need more. We haven't received life. All our attempts to be who we want to be bring us death. We are like sheep without a shepherd. We really have lost our way. But hear the words of the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture, and they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. God has promised to gather his sheep back to himself, and we see that gathering in Jesus. We see Jesus who saw the crowds and had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And so Jesus was lifted up to draw all people to himself to give them life. Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. This is God once again giving life to his people. God is gathering his people. He's breathing his spirit of life into us again so that we can be who we were created to be. So we see the church established as a community of the new humanity. Each one of you here is a loving limit to each other. We see each other for who we are, not who we want to be. It's no secret that everyone here has their limits. Each of us has our shortcomings. 
which shows how desperately we need a good shepherd to give us life. And I know that for each one of us, it's worse than we let on. We have a hard time admitting even to ourselves how bad it's gotten. But that's exactly the person that we love here, because that's who Christ loves. You, in all of your limited being and failure, are the body of Christ. We are here to receive life, to be who we were created to be. So what sort of product are we selling here as the church? I know, I know there's some churches that put out ads. That's all good. Go ahead and do that. Uh, but the real ad for every church is its people. We are the billboard for new life in Christ. Right here at Prairie Presbyterian. <clears throat> Not because we're perfect or because we look good on a billboard or because we're better than anyone else, but because we receive our life from God. His spirit is in us to give us life. So, run the ad. Come here to church. Receive your life from your creator. Be who you were created to be. We know you aren't who you want to be or who you think you should be. We know that you don't have everything figured out because you were never meant to. We know what you are. We know it's worse than you let on. And we love you. So join us. Meet the good shepherd who gives us everything we need who has formed us from the dirt and gives us the breath of life. Be part of the body of Christ. Receive your being from your creator. He loves you. He is the good shepherd. So welcome to the new you. Welcome to the new humanity. Welcome to who you were created to be. <clears throat>